time. Yes, welcome to Splatterlot. We raise the drawbridge and invite 12 brave young contenders to go head to head with those despicable defenders as they compete to capture the much treasured and highly coveted Splatterlot crown. Yes! Will the defenders keep the castle safe from the attackers and protect their kingdom, or will the attackers overthrow them and in the end reign victorious? So who will tumble? Who will tilt? Who will teeter? And you guess it, who will go? Splat! Well, hello. Who's Dick? He's Dom, and this is Splatterlot. You know what? We get asked a lot of Splatterlot-related questions. The most common is this. Has anyone else noticed that dashing Viking defender called Gildar? I've enclosed the picture. Isn't he lovely? Or a Mr. G. Ildar from Vikinghamshire? Yeah. Hang on a minute. That's strange. These are all from him as well. <laughs> how about that? If you haven't met him yet, don't worry. You're in for a treat. Mm. The rest of you simply want to know how to become the king or the queen of Splatterlot. Well, here's the simplest answer. Be one of the fastest six in our opening mode challenge, capture one of four flags in the stockade, and then finish first in the grand final. The Splatterlot crown is then yours. See? Simple. Mm, yeah, it's about as simple as doing your maths homework in a bath full of kippers. Let's see that moat challenge again. We begin with a skip across the pungent plank. Then it's the rolling mace. Look out for those spiky bits. The impossible incline is next, and that leads to the beastly battle axes. The rope bridge of disaster follows. Mind the trip hazards. And finally, the debilitating disc takes us to the finish line. But don't forget, all of this is against the clock. Yep, it's getting less simpler by the second. Mm, so is that sentence. And of course, things are about to get even more less simple, because the boat challenge, like all of the challenges, is defended by a bunch of nasty, mean, dastardly evil. What he means is it's time to meet the defenders. <laughs> Don't they make a lovely bunch? In round one, our three defenders will be the croc, who won't stop till you drop, croc Ness, the heartless huntress, Belista, and the guy who writes his own fan mail, Gildar. So this will be a hair-raising experience. Mm. How's mine? Not as good as mine. Oh, he makes me feel ill. OK, let's get back to the course. Crocness is on the Splatzooka. Belista is on the water drop. And Gildar has the slime stick. Here's our first attacker, Kate. <laughs> well, I hope that sets the tone for the rest of the show. Attacker! <laughs> Defenders aren't wasting any time with the taunting. You're after our crown, hey? Yes, Croc, that's why Kate's here. But Kate doesn't want to be there. Flubbery snit! That's not how you do it. Croc's right, but it is our first splat of the day, and that's something Kate can be very proud of. And she rise to a different challenge altogether. Kate, would you say I'm more handsome or more gorgeous? Yeah. I can't hear you over the paint! Go, oh, Bungled! Well, textbook taunting from Gildar. His smarmy charm really puts Kate off. Then his smarm turns to slime, and the battle axes do the rest. But she's OK. Hey, Kate! The shower once a day keeps the smell away. <laughs> oh, no, Belize is taunting in rhyme. Splushy! Maybe it's Croc who needs that shower. Yeah, like you never have a bad air day. Come on, Kate, let's have a little deja vu. Belista gives Kate her second shower of the day. That's a power shower, and I think it might lead to an early bath. Schnizzle whip! Well, proof there that this is the cleanest show on TV. Shower bath, shower bath. Now, where's a towel when you need one? So, Katie's home, but not dry, in a time of 5 minutes 23. Here's attacker number two, Sandra. Ping Wham Bolty! Tell us what you love, Sandra. I love your pizza, Mamma Well, whatever it is, she really loves it. Will she love meeting Croc Ness? Stoke! Well, no lovers yet. G'day, g'day. Croc tries to break the ice, but no, Sandra isn't having any of it. She makes a move and... Jumbo Cumberland! But she's back up, keeping her eye on Croc. Still no love. Down the incline she goes and... Patoo-doo-doo-doo-doo-doos! Well, she seems to love the moat. Sandra demonstrating perfectly that slide often comes before a fall. Proud of yourself? I am. But will Sandra be proud of her time of 7.28? There's only so many happy dances I can watch. Thank you, Gildar. Here's our next attacker, Cole. Eat it! Well, Cole did eat up the plank slope and mace. How about the incline? Pop goes the dribbly weasel. Dribbly weasel indeed. Yes, Cole's bitten off more than he can chew there. Yes, too speedy and just a bit squeaky. I thank you. Now can Cole make it across the bridge? Bum onions! And these splats are eating up the clock. Hey, Cole, when you said eat it, what were you talking about? They eat you! Whoa, we can't allow that. Gildar not happy with that taunting. Ooh! Belista now joins him with a water cannon. A drink to go with a moat course meal. Cole tries to shrug it off. He grabs the rope and dirty weasel. Gildar, don't look. Close your eyes. 
Is it what I think it is? Oh, yeah. ah! Whoa! Ah! Yes, Cole's rubbing it in Gildar's face with that happy dance. And his time's not too shabby either. Thanks, Cole. Is he gone? Yes, Gildar, calm down and focus on the next attacker. Madison! Ah! Ooh, scary tiger. Here's Madison on the slope. Welcome to Splatterlot. Abingdon! Crew! Darby! Ah, another point for Crockness! Klaus! Selby! Torquay! This Croc woman is on fire today. Doval! Okay. Buxton! Please. Telford! Enough. Hatfield! Stop! Good! Right, back to Madison, who's soaking up these splats. Norwich! Yes! I give up. Bears Den! Well, it's a good job Madison hasn't. She's onto the battle axes, and yes, she makes it over. At least she's got her out of Croc's range now. Douglas! I don't believe this. Yes, and straight as an arrow, Croc's 13th paintball flies towards Madison, a very unlucky sitting target. Unlucky? It's like Madison's a splat magnet. Well, she's safe now. I wouldn't bank on it. And finishes with a time of 7.14. I hate big! Surely wasps are worse, Oliver. Billericky! Ooh, did that hurt? Not a bit. Don't look out for those spikes. Rubble Dumper! Yes, the mace definitely has a sting in his tail. Be careful, Oliver. Don't bumble around, or you'll be making a beeline for the moat. Oh, please, will you be hive yourself? Sorry, honey. And while we drone on... Nice. Oliver buzzes over the course in 6.48. Beautiful. I like blue! Amanda likes blue, but does she like Belista? Just call me Mother Nature, because I make it rain when and wherever I want it to. And just to prove her point, here comes the rain. That just makes the slippery slope extra slippery. Mm -hmm. How extra slippery would you say the slippery slope is? I couldn't possibly say. Boo boo bra vinit! That's how slippy. Crockness and Gilda, and they're raining down on Amanda, and she's about to get even more wet. Or oh, Bimbo Baggins! Yes, she loses her footing on the first axe then. Not just choppy, they're slippy too. And that slip leads to a trip to the moat. Gilda slimes the skies in an attempt to reach Amanda, who's now at the debilitating disc. Elise, they're still making it rain. But this is a really brave attempt from Hannah. In these adverse conditions, she topples but hangs on in there. This is impressive stuff. Ow! That is superior Viking-like strength. And she's made it! What an amazing effort! But that bad weather slowed her down and has left Amanda trailing in sixth place. Yes, only the top six qualify, and with six more attackers to come, sixth place is a dangerous place to be. Confirmation of those times, Cole leads with 444, and Amanda trails with 852. But no one's out yet. Yeah, ah, oh, yes, but um, no one's safe yet either. That's the beauty of it. At this point in the show, no one knows what's coming next. <laughs> As I said, no one knows what's coming next. Here's what's coming next. Plenty more splats and plenty of opportunities to get my own back. Now, now, don't bear a grudge. Before we continue with the uh, second half, Dom's just gone to get cleaned up, so we've just got time for a few more of your lovely letters. <laughs> right, this one says, uh, Scab loves Scab. So uh, I think we know who wrote that one. OK. Uh, Tinkor Stinks signed the other defenders. Ah, oh, that's not very nice, is it? I'm sure he doesn't really. Yes, he does sign the defenders. Well, the post is quick round here, isn't it? Time for one more, I think. Yes. Don't look in the medieval mailbag. I wonder why not. <clears throat> oh, sorry. That'll get me own back. Right, now that I'm nice and clean, I think we can uh, start the second half. Here's what our next six attackers have to beat. Cole is our current leader with 444, and Amanda is in the danger zone with a time to beat of 852. Crockness, Belista, and Gildar are back on the course and ready to go. Yes, but I'm not. I'll shut your fat wet face. So, kicking off with a slope splat, here's our next attacker, John. I am soft hair! Uh-oh, maybe John and Gilda have something in common. Oh, suck or splutter! Now John has soft damp hair. Yes, I guess he just didn't gel with the spiky-haired mace. Cue the bad hair day. Talking of which, here's Gilda. Do you think that's slime or conditioner? Hard to know with Gilda. John takes a leap. Oh, smudgy badger! Well, Gilda certainly seems to be up for the second half. So, we've had the conditioner. Here's Ballista with the rinse. Can John hold on? Dingle dangle ping ping pow! That moat water is going to do nothing for your split ends, my friend. Surely Whoa. he means splat ends. Either way, John won't mind as he's finished with a great time of 4.52. Here's our next attacker, Jenna. Booyah! And here she is on the impossible incline. Jenna, the handsome voice you're hearing right now is that of me, Gilda. Oh! Watch the hair! Did she just throw something at me? You're supposed to be impressed, you know? Disqualify her! 
Well, there's nothing in the rule book that says attackers can't fight back. After all, they are attackers. But the course soon reminds Jenna who's really in charge. Still, well done for trying. How will she cope with Billista? Well, she's unbalanced and goo goo liquor. Jenna does her best to hang on, but there really is no room for error up there. But plenty of room in the moat. Well, she may have got the better of Gildar, but the course got the better of Jenna, and sadly, she's out. Here's attacker number nine, Jeff. Uh, Jeff, Jeff, you're going the wrong way, love. Yeah! Well, here he is, going the right way on the mace. Oh, well, was the right way to start with. How about the incline? I suppose there is only one way to go. Plop, Whiffle! Now, just a debilitating disc to go! What was he thinking? You have some weird tactics there, Jeff. Croc's right, but they may have paid off with a time of 7 minutes 10. Jeff might just scrape in. Oh, I got Astrid likes ice cream, and she also likes to scream. Will she like the wafer thin pungent plank, though? Oh, her strength's deserting her. Come on, Asterix. Come on, Bastion. Come on, Aspirin. Let's see what you got. I know. That's what I said. Is there anything worse than getting someone's name wrong? Well, I don't know. How about falling off a mason into the moat on television? Uh, a tough break for Asteroid. Well, that name calling didn't get to Asteroid, but the mace did. Naughty mace. And she does not finish, which makes me sad. I blame Gildar. Let's start calling him names. Radar? Yeah. Glider? Yes. Darth Vayner? Like it. OK, no one tickle Amina. Come on, Amoeba, I don't have all day. Come on, Ammonia. Come on, Anesthesia. It's Amina, and so's the incline. Very Amina indeed. Say something, Will Amina. Now, is Gildar just being mean, or is he actually being very clever with these off-putting tactics? How about mean and clever? Well, he hasn't stopped ticklish Amina from finishing, but her time of 8.20 is too slow to qualify. Hey, did someone just tickle her? Here's today's final right. attacker. Or maybe that should be final splat attacker. Let's go! Yes, Jared. Let's go out with a bang. Here he is on the axes. Gildar sliming. And Jared. Oh! Halfway up the trouser leg. Halfway up the trouser leg, indeed. Jared was caught in two minds whether to stay or go. The minds didn't agree, so the moat decided for him. Jared's looking tired after that splat, but just take a closer look at Gildar. That is just plain lazy. What are you doing, Gildar? When I get tired, I'm just not my Viking self. Whatever, Gildar. Meanwhile, Jared has found some energy from somewhere. Hey! But that water cannon finishes the poor guy off. Pompa sissy! Good teamwork, everyone. Proud to be steering this ship. Thanks for the help, Gildar. Appreciate it. Well, this is interesting. Gildar lies down on the job, and Jared posts the fastest time of the day. Coincidence? To be honest, I think Jared would have made it anyway. But Gildar is really pushing his luck with Ballista and Croc Ness. So, let's see who's made it through to round two. It's Jared, Cole, John, Kate, Oliver and Jeff, who will soon be thrown into our stockade. You know, when you put it that way, it doesn't sound like much of a reward. Hey, 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 if you want to win that crown, then you've got to work for it. And in the stockade, my little friend, you've got to splat for it too. So, before we move on to round two, yeah. uh, what have we learned from round one? Uh, fastest attacker. Ah, that's Jared. Oh, slowest attacker. Jeff. Oh, the most impressive defender. Mm, Crockness with 13 paintball splats in a row. Most annoying defender? Well, it's the same one every time. Oh, yes. Mr. G. Ildar from Vikinghamshire, mm -hmm. a.k.a. Glidar, <laughs> Radar, Darth Vaynar, the guy who sleeps on the job. That's the one. OK, right, enough about him. Back to the competition. The six fastest attackers have now made it through to the stockade, but only four of them will escape to compete in the grand final. And in that final, one of them will become the new ruler of Splatterlot. So, who's it going to be? Jared, Cole, John, Kate, Oliver, or Jeff? Well, whoever it is, they're going to need a different set of skills in the next challenge, right? Being fast will help, but escaping the stockade requires so much more! The attackers start by dashing across the giant spinning hexagon. And then leaping onto the hexapods, positioned beneath the ladder rungs. These rungs will help build the ladders they'll need to escape. Once built, they can grab one of only four flags before escaping to victory and a guaranteed place in the grand final! Yes, six attackers, but only four flags, so two of them won't be escaping the stockade. Mm. However, all of them will be facing three new defenders. That's a shame. I would imagine they'd all prefer to be up against dozy old Gildar again. Oh, no, my pretend friend. It's these three. He's the joker in the pack. Kookaburra! She always packs a mean splat. Shaden. And she's our very own Lady Knight. Nitrous! Attackers! Give it your best shot! It still won't be good enough! So, let's check out the attacker's colours before the foam starts raining down on them. Kate's in the red. Jared's gone for pink. 
Paul has the navy helmet, John is in purple, Oliver's wearing orange, and Jeff is sporting green. Now, can the defenders stay focused? Looking good so far. And they're off! It's begun! <laughs> yes, Pete, that's what the klaxon's for. Early leap from Oliver and John there. Ah! Make it easy for you. Nitrous foaming at the mouth and the cannon. Good landing from Kate, not so good from Cole. That's what's happening. Uh-oh, here come the goo grenades. But the attackers just keep shrugging them off. Jared has a run. So is John and Oliver. And Cole, it's a run fest. Shaden decides it's time to slow them down with some slime. Tonka! Jared slips off his hexapod. Oh, and Jeff then does the same, nearly taking out the camera. Well, if you're on telly, you might as well try for a close-up. Not sure the goggles, helmets and phone work so well in the close-up, though. This guy's working well. John's almost finished his ladder. Shaden with more goo. And this time she splats Jared. Yes, Jared's pretty much the bullseye in the middle of the hexagon. And he almost has that rung knocked out of his hand. And that rung wasn't easy to come by. He's had quite a few crash landings. Yes, there's nothing worse than landing badly on your hexapods. Exactly. What well, what's this? John's grabbing the first flag. That brings Oliver into action. Careful, Ollie! And Cole is also thrown by the news. There he goes up the ladder, and John is the first attacker through to the grand final. So that means three flags and five attackers remain. Eat slime! Can a slime win splat of the day? I don't see why not. Jared still leaping well and landing badly. And it's catching. There goes Cole. And is that Jared again? Hard to tell with all that foam. Now, what's Kook up to? Not exactly the right time for a tea break. Ooh, looks like he wants it milky. Surely this is as bad as Gildar earlier. What are the defenders thinking? Now, can the attackers take advantage of this? Well, not if Jeff and Kate can't make their landings. Shaden now making up for Coop's nonsense by sliming Oliver. I want some of this, attackers! You're not doing too well, buddy. <laughs> Looks like tea breaks over. Throbber! I don't believe it. The attackers fight back. And Jeff splats Kookaburra with a paintball and maybe teaches him a lesson. I'm not going to cry. I'm not going to cry. What is it, my dear? He threw something at me! Well, you've only got yourself to blame, Kook. I thought you were the finger. Great hand freak. Oh, no, you didn't. Uh-oh. Oh, you're a great hand freak now, buddy. Now, what was Oliver thinking? Kook had lost the plot, but the taunting has just fired him up again. You're right. Kook's really got it in for Ollie now. Splurge. Ah, oh, you know, if you squawk the squawk, you got to walk the walk, little man. Yes, Kook's definitely back. Jerry grabs the second flag. Boogies! And Shaden also defending Kook's honour with a bucket of slime for poor young Ollie. Jared now makes it to the top, and he is the second attacker to escape the stockade. Jeff grabs the third flag. And what's this? Oliver is nearly finished. No, 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 he's forgotten to grab a flag. See, all that nonsense with Kook has distracted him. Nothing distracting Jeff. He's also through to the final. Kook doesn't want Ollie to go through, but he's going for the last flag. Kate still after rolls, and so is Cole, but I think it's too late. Yes, Oliver is climbing. Cole still building. And the game is officially over. We have our finalists. Someone tell Cole it's over. While you're at it, tell Kate too. Oliver is still taunting. And that could come back to haunt him. Buki. So, confirmation that today's finalists will be John, Jared, Jeff, and self proclaimed taunt master Oliver. Doesn't he realise that all six defenders will be waiting for him in the final? Come on. Wouldn't have they ever needed an excuse to give someone a good splat? True. But it's just going to add to the excitement as they all do battle over that much treasured crown. Right, you. How about a splat stat attack and your splat stat hat? Oh, yes, right. Well, let's start with the facts. John has done well, yes. He came third in the moat challenge and then won round two. But Jared is more consistent with a first and second place so far. Four stats. OK, let's move on to the bad boys. Yes, Oliver and Jeff only just scraped into the second round. And then it all kicked off when Jeff threw that paintball at Kook. Oliver then got mouthy and Kook got splatty. Four stats. All right, the defenders aren't totally blameless, though. Gildar offended everyone by taking a nap in round one. And then Kook provoked the attackers when he had a tea break in the stockade. It's all going to add to the tension in the final. Uh, so... Let's remind ourselves who those finalists are. Yes! It's the three J's. John, Jared and Jeff. Plus an O for Oliver. So that means the OJs are in the final. <laughs> Juicy. Yes, but here comes the real juice. 100% pure splat with all the lumpy bits left in. It's the defenders, Gildar, Ballista, Kookaburra, Crocknest, Nitrous and Shaden. Here's the capture the crown course in more detail. Our four brave young warriors start with a drop into the mud baths. Then it's over the slippy slides and up the titanic teeter-totters. The barrier of all barriers leads to those lovely leaping lily pads. And then it's up the water wall where the much treasured crown of Splatterlot awaits. And there's only one, so it's winner takes all, folks. 
The attackers are ready to go. Jeff is in green. Oliver stays orange. John with purple green combo. And Jared in pink. Purple. Feather. Purple. 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 Feather. Who purple. knows what that means? Feather. But it doesn't matter now. The attackers are into the mud. And then it's a foamy welcome from Nitrous. Oh, yes! Jeff and Oliver go head first on the slippy slide. Jared tries the upright approach. Oh, puck slab. And this is where the slips and splats really start. At the foot of the teeter totters. Down goes Jeff. And down goes John. Remember, John won the last round. Distant memory now, eh? Crabbles! Crabbles! Spoosh! Congratulations on making it this far. And Shaden congratulates Jeff straight into the moat. Oh, and congratulations, Jared. Congratulations, Ollie. Ah, but we must genuinely congratulate John. He's the first to the barrier. Ah, take that. All right, Pink, let's go. Ooh, what's happening? Cook was aiming for Jared, but it hits the camera. Percy, our camera operator, shows up his first splat of the day. It's upside down. Yeah, yeah, a bad villain always blames his splat zooka. John leaps and makes it onto the lily pad. And it's hard to see through the jet of water, but it looks like Nitrous has run out of vapour. Amazing Stoke, Cook hit Nitrous. Yes! <laughs> he hit a fellow defender. But he got the vaporizer working again, so we'll say nothing more about it. Jared, you're going the wrong way. John isn't, he's one leap nearer the crown. Look here, Peanut. Oh. <laughs> We've got a comedian. Oliver and Cook are at it again. Smelly trouser sprouts. Yeah! <laughs> Cook has the last laugh after Oliver provides his own punchline. And check Jeff out. It's a splatter slapstick double act. Back to the lily pads. John is way out ahead, but Nitrous and Croc are pinning him down. Jared, tea tree, but this time he holds on. But John leaps even further ahead. The other attackers need to make a move soon. Otherwise, it'll be too late. Jared makes it to the barrier, but he needs to have both feet firmly planted. No, that's not good enough. One more leap for John. And yes, he makes it. He's been leaping like a leaping lizard in a leap year. Jared, back on the teacher. No, he's off. Belista with a shot puts back. But he misses, and John is now at the water wall. Ginky land, and even taunting Oliver is lost for words. Can anyone stop John now? He's not going to get the crown. And finally, Gildar wakes up to what's happening. The other attackers are still struggling, and John is almost there. He's not going to do it. Gildar in denial. And Oliver in demote. There it is. John reaches, and yes, he has the crown. All hail King John, the new king of Splatterlot. It's all over for the other attackers. They can do nothing now other than catch their breath. And what will the defenders be thinking, especially Gildar? Yeah! Told you you never gave me. Well, apart from that last little outburst, John was a pretty mild-mannered competitor. I mean, remember his battle cry? I have soft hair. So remember, it's sometimes the soft-spoken, soft-haired ones that you have to look out for. Here's something else we have to look out for. It's the splat of the day. Splat! What makes a splat special? Well, we're always searching for those unique splats that we've never seen before and may never see again. So with that in mind, here's Kook, the first to splat a fellow yes. defender. And that's why we love him. Yes, a truly hysterical moment. <laughs> Don't you mean historical? No, hysterical. This is historical. I am so here! Yes, this is how King John's journey began. He sped through the moat. Whoa. Was the first attacker to grab a flag and escape the stockade. And despite some early teetering and tottering, he led from start to finish in his quest to capture the crown. Yeah! John, where are you? Sorry about this, uh, ladies and gentlemen. We'll have plenty more splatterific entertainment for you next time. Mm, when I'm uh, sure the defenders will be acting far more professionally than they did in this episode. Right, I'm off for a nap. See you later. Here's the uh, flag ceremony. Oi! I am the king of the castle!